Good evening, everybody. Uh, how about those chiefs? Hey, y'all, I had to scratch myself on this one. Um, I created this problem, and there's a ton of unknowns. Um, we have a third degree polynomial missing a square term, and everything is unknown here other than the sum of the cubes of the roots. So believe it or not, there is a solution to this. And again, A, B, and C are the uh, zeros or the roots of this expression here. And also P and Q are also real numbers. And we have enough information here to actually determine the value of Q. So um, now just to give you a rundown on how this works, I'm, there's a lot of it I'm not going to show you, but I want to, there's some nice structure underneath all this that allows us to get a solution with scant information. So let's write down what this means. We all know it means that if you have A, a B, and C as, as zeros, that means they, they convert to linear factors. So that means this T cubed, would you could write this as, uh, T uh, minus A, okay, times uh, T minus B. Again, y'all, if you have zeros, you also have linear factors, right? Basic result from algebra. Okay, so this poly any third degree polynomial, in particular this one, can be written as a product of linear factors that involve the zeros. Okay, so what we got here, minus C. Now, when you multiply this out, and what I've done here to cut down on some of the clutter is I've defined these, what we call elementary symmetric polynomials. I just called sigma one here. Some people call this E1, but sigma one is A plus B plus C. Notice that's the sum of the roots. Sigma two is all, possible products of two of the roots. And finally, sigma th sub three is the product of the roots, all right, uh, A, B, C. Now, what happens when you multiply this out, and this is this is kind of a famous result, it's called Vieta's result, is you actually get that this is equal to, certainly T cubed is gonna be present, right? Um, Again, when you multiply this out, t times t times t certainly gives you t cubed. But what is what was kind of surprising to me when I first saw this is that what what you get is minus. You would actually get uh, a plus b plus c, but a plus b plus c is actually uh, sigma one. Okay, and that would be times t squared. And y'all, again, you're, I'm forcing you to trust me just a little bit, but it's not hard to believe that when you multiply this out, that, uh, that you would get the sum of the zeros in front of the T squared term. And you'd have to do it by hand to really see it. But anyway, for now, I'm just gonna write it as a result. Now, the very next term turns out to be plus, uh, and there's really no need to put it in, in the, parentheses like I did right here. I, I just did it, I guess, to let you know that really means A plus B plus C. Now right here you get sigma two times T. All right, and then your very last term is just uh, sigma three. Now there would be actually, sorry, there would be a, a minus sign. Uh, that would be, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to erase this. Uh, Okay, yeah, this, so this would be a minus. Okay, a minus uh, ABC, but ABC is actually just sigma three. Y'all, yeah, I hope you're kind of, this is a little messy, but these, this is kind of a, an attempt to com, make things compact rather than write everything down, but, uh, Notice that the minus sign right here is present because you have one, two, three minus signs, right? So independent of the value of A, B, and C, all right, you're gonna have a negative times a negative times a negative, which is this minus sign you see right here. And it's just the, these signs alternate as, as you move across here. 
Okay. But anyway, I hope that kind of gives you some reasoning here. The, the sig, uh, sigma sub three or the elementary sub three, whatever you want to call it, it's actually the, the minus the product of the zeros. Okay. Now, from that, we can see that since there is a missing, uh, there's no t squared term right here. You have zero t squared going on right here, right? So you see that tells you that implies that uh, remember sigma minus sigma one is the coefficient of t squared. So that implies that sigma one is equal to zero. Okay. All right. Then also in a similar fashion, you get that uh, Q is equal to minus sigma three. I have that written down right down here. I wrote both of these statements down here, but they, they're they true because of this up here. All right. Now, um, so now another thing, and again, I'm leaving a lot out because it's, it's tedious enough to go through this, but, but uh, if you actually expand out, if you take sigma one, which is um, A plus B plus C and you cube it, you end up with this identity, all right? Okay, and it relates the original expression to all these elementary symmetric polynomials, all right? Now, what we caught here was a break, and again, it would take probably 10 minutes to show this, 10 or 15 minutes to actually write it all out and show you, but it's a lot of algebra, you collect like terms, and you get this expression right here. But what we know now is you see this, if, if, you, if you trust this circled result, we already know that sigma one is equal to zero, right? So that means that this term right here will vanish, okay? And this sigma one is involved right here. So this entire term will vanish as well. They'll all be equal to zero. And you see right here that a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed, guess what, that's given. Okay, here's some actual concrete given information. So you can kind of see why this is the only initial condition that where you really know what any of the numbers are, right? But you can see that because uh, all of this stuff cancels out, you would have right here, uh, you would have minus four uh, root six all over three, right folks? All right, that, that again, that's given information, that's given information. All of these terms go away, right? And so you see what we get uh, is just that this is equal to three root three. I'm sorry, <laughs> not three root three, but three sigma three. Okay, and again, that's that's sometimes called E3 in a lot of, lot of context. So this part right here is equal to this, uh, equal to this right here. And I, I showed you the work right here. Um, it, with these two terms being equal to zero, you can actually solve and you actually get what we're looking for. Q is actually equal to four root six over nine. And again, I, it would have been a lot messier, believe it or not, if I would have actually shown you where this where this identity came from. But hopefully that made sense. And if you want any more explanation or, or, or need some videos where you to see why some of this stuff, some of this preliminary work is true, just let me know. Leave me a comment. I'll be glad to show you that because I know you're there's a lot of faith going on right here, but I hope that this part right up here helped quite a bit for you guys. All right, again, final result, uh, Q is at four root six uh, divided by nine, and that actually means the product of the zeros is minus this number. But anyway, it just, the, the question just asks you, what is the value of Q? All right, thanks.